Good morning and welcome wherever you're watching from this morning. It's good to have you with us today, an online gathering for Parkhead and the Charter. It is Palm Sunday today, the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey and the crowds waved palm branches to welcome him into their city. And so we'll be thinking about that particular story this morning in our gathering together. And one of the things that we're going to do more and more in the weeks and the months to come is hear from various guests and friends of our church and have them preach for us and share what God is placing on their hearts in this season, and hopefully even for our church here in Parkhead. So I'm pleased today to say that we will have the Reverend Richard Porter sharing with us. He's a very good friend of the church, and I'll say a little bit more later on in terms of introducing him. Well, just now quite a few things for us today in terms of announcements. A very obvious highlight for us this week is the birth of baby Jacob Christopher Kenny on Monday of this week, weighing in at seven pounds 15 ounces and we're obviously just so delighted for the Kenny family and we just want to congratulate Chris, Shelley, John and Lydia on their new arrival and assure them of both our love and our prayers in the days that lie ahead. 
Go on to some other things. A wee reminder that our AGM is tomorrow night on Zoom at 7.30pm and everyone is welcome to log on, whether you're a church member or not. And as you can imagine, it won't be like a traditional AGM where we have voting and departmental reports and that kind of thing. However, there will still be attention given to important matters. We'll have a chance to state a little of how we went about appointing a board for the coming year. We'll also hear a little about the church's finances and perhaps quite relevant for the next few months, we'll have the chance to revisit some of the church's vision material that we spoke about back in January. So please do log on tomorrow night. And if you haven't managed to pick up the Zoom link on email or on WhatsApp, then please pop us a wee message on Facebook and we can make sure we get that across to you this morning. Thanks also to those who have booked up with Claire for our in-person services over the Easter period. I'm afraid to say that both services are now full, but we do have a waiting list in case any cancellations come up. So please contact Claire if you'd like to be part of that. Just a reminder as well that we will be repeating our Good Friday service on Zoom in the evening at 7.30pm. And as it's a recovery church night, first Friday of the month, we'll have some of our recovery church team involved in that. And they'll be helping to lead us in some scripture and reflection. One last thing to say is that you may also have seen that the travel restrictions for places of worship have been lifted. And this means that people are now allowed to travel across council boundaries in order to get to their place of worship. Now, I know there are different opinions in this, so we really want to leave this up to the individual. But it does mean that people who live in other council areas are able to attend our in-person services, our youth and children's activities and our life groups, should they choose to do so. We will, of course, however, continue to ensure that all the groups that meet in both the church and the charter wear masks, as well as adhere to social distancing guidelines and all the relevant hygiene procedures. Well, I'm sorry that was a lot of announcements today, but hopefully all helpful. Let's take a moment now to pause to be still before we come to God in our worship. Lord Jesus, just as the crowds welcomed you with shouts of Hosanna and with the laying of palm branches all those years ago, we also welcome you this morning. We welcome you into our hearts, into our homes, into our families, into every area of our lives, Jesus. And Lord, at a time where there are so many things that are changing, we remind ourselves that we welcome you, the unchanging one, the eternal one, the one who is the same yesterday, today and forever. And so God, would you help us this morning to concentrate upon you, to yield to you, God, to give you the glory and the honour and the praise that you deserve. And Lord, as we do that, would we also be challenged and changed and encouraged this morning? So we welcome you afresh this morning, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hosanna, 
never gonna let me down. You're never gonna, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let. as I mentioned earlier, we have the Reverend Richard Porter speaking for us this morning. Richard and his wife Karen now live in the Antrim area of Northern Ireland where they lead a retreat house called the Moat Inn. And this was somewhere that I had the chance to visit during my sabbatical at the beginning of last year. But Richard's a really good friend of our congregation here in Parkhead as well. He was an associate pastor during the early part of the Reverend Colin Woods ministry. And he was a real catalyst in further helping the church look outwards towards the local community. Actually, during his ministry here, he had a flat at Parkhead Cross. And when I spoke to him recently, he told me that he would get up in the morning and he would stand at the window and he would pray over Parkhead Cross and the local area. And I suppose when we see what God is now doing in our community in these days, we thank God for folks like Richard who went before us and invested in our community and prayed for it even if they've now moved on. So I know that Richard is still a much loved and respected voice for our church, but also for the wider Nazarene church across the British Isles. And so we really appreciate him taking time to speak for us this morning. So Richard, thank you so much. We really look forward to what God has to say to us through you this morning. Good morning and greetings to all my friends there in Parkhead and all my brothers and sisters living there in paradise while I'm stuck here on the big emerald sponge of the British Isles. The rain never lets up here. I wish I was in Las Vegas with my mother, <laughs> at least the sun shines. But hey, what can I say? At least it's green. You know, this is Palm Sunday. It's the first day of what we call Holy Week. And you know, I just thinking during my hippie days, which was way back before the dinosaur, we used to have a lot of little sayings, you know, little code words between between us. And one of them was just, it went like this, you give the peace sign, you know the peace sign? And you just say, peace, love, dope. And, and really, you know, what it actually meant is, don't bother me, let's have sex and let's smoke some weed. <laughs> peace, love, dope, that's what it was about. But then um, I found... I didn't have any peace at all. It was like I uh, I had panic attacks. I found I couldn't be and going to bars hardly because I was always shaking or, or just so messed up. And for love, I didn't know what love was. And for the dope, well, well, that was just a killer. It never took any of us where we wanted to go. But then... I found Jesus, well, Jesus Christ found me. That's what it was. And he saved me. He delivered me. He cleansed me. He freed me from drugs. He did all of these things for me. He, basically, it's like it says, Jesus saved me. 
You saved me from myself. And now I know what the peace of God is in my heart. And now I know what it, what it is, what, what love really is, how to receive it and how to give it. And the drugs are just out the window completely, and I thank God for it. But everyone that I, I was with wanted peace. I think everybody today wants peace of some kind. And, and the, sometimes we walk around, there's like a little tornado going on in our, in our heart, in, in our minds. Peace. It's the most wonderful thing God gives us. And on that first Palm Sunday, that's what the people wanted. They wanted to be free from Rome. They wanted to be free from danger or, or looking out the window and, and hoping there wasn't swords and, and sabers rattling in their back garden. They were looking for peace. And then on that Palm Sunday morning in John 12, 12, it says, The next day, the great crowd that had come from the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. And you know, all the time they were yelling, Hosanna. What, what, the, what Hosanna means in the Hebrew is, save us. Save us, Lord King. Save us. Save us. Give us peace. Free us. And what they really wanted was a King David. Now, David in the past, in the Old Testament, is a warrior, and, and he fought all the battles and, and gained a lot of land for Israel, but he was a warrior. He was a man of blood. And one day, David said, you know, I'm going to build a temple for you, God. And God came and said, no, no, David, you are not going to do that. And, and, and it says in 1 Chronicles 22, 8, you have shed much blood and have fought many wars. You are not to build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. So God said no to David then. He says, he said no to David. And when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey, he was also saying no to Israel. God was saying, no to Israel, I am not sending you a warrior king to bring you peace. Not like this. And then going on in 1 Chronicles 22, 9, it says, God said to David, but you will have a son who will be a man of peace and rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. His name will be Solomon. And I will grant Israel peace and quiet during his reign. And you know how Solomon began his reign? He goes to his ordination service riding on a donkey. Not a warrior stallion, but on a donkey. And this is what Jesus was showing the people when he rode in on that Palm Sunday. I am not the warrior of blood. I am not going to free you from the Romans with a sword, but I am coming to you. You want a David. And God says, but I'm sending you a Solomon. I am sending you the Prince of Peace. And the peace Jesus bought on the cross was, was for the whole world for the rest of eternity from that moment on. It was much more that, than just fighting off a few soldiers. So we find on this Palm Sunday while riding in, in Luke 19.39, it says, some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, as he was riding by on the donkey, they said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. What they were saying is stop them from saying this, Hosanna, save us, save us. You're, you're, just, a, you're, you're just a person riding on a donkey. And Jesus said, I tell you, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And then the next verse is so telling, and I have missed this so many times, and I didn't realize this, but it says, as he approached Jerusalem, 
Now, how was he approaching Jerusalem? It was Palm Sunday. He was on the donkey and he was in all the palm branches were going on, you know, waving around. And then on the way to Jerusalem, it says, and he saw the city and he wept over it and said, if even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Well, Jesus was going in on Palm Sunday. He was weeping on, on that donkey. As the people were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus was weeping for Jerusalem as he rode into the city. And then he, he says to, to, about to the Pharisees, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, That's why he was weeping. They had missed the peace he was bringing. God wasn't sending a warrior like David. He was sending a Solomon to go to the cross. And you know what I find interesting is that near the end of Holy Week, you know, the peace that Jesus knew came from the way he lived his life. You, we, we, say, we see him in Gethsemane and, and he basically he prays, Lord, get me out of this if you can, but not my will, but your will be done. But you know, that prayer was on the tail end of another prayer. I often wondered, boy, that's a kind of a anticlimactic way to end your ministry, Jesus. And your last prayer is, Lord, get me out of this mess. But, but I realized, and I read once in John 17, it is the longest prayer Jesus ever prayed, prayed and that prayer was prayed about an hour before he was in Gethsemane. Because in John 18, 1, it says, As soon as Jesus prayed this prayer, then he went over, over to the garden, which was the Garden of Gethsemane. But the first five verses of this prayer tell us so much about how to live in peace. He says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And the first line, the hour has come. And he knew, Lord, Father, the hour has come for me to die. I know this. And I'm accepting it here. I have peace. This is God's timing. You know, that, that's where peace comes from a lot of times. Just knowing God's timing. It's knowing what season we are in right now. Like he said, said to the Pharisees, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring peace, if you only knew the timing that I am visiting you right now, you would have peace. But your eyes aren't focused on God. You do not know God. You have a lot of religion, but you don't know God. And Jesus said, now I know, Father, that this is a time for me to die. You know, he could have died back when he was, before he was two years old, when King Herod went to kill all the babies. But God, the Father was saying, this is not the time for you to die, Jesus. You have more to do. So he takes him off to Egypt to protect him. There was a time when Jesus was preaching in Nazareth and all the people came and they wanted to throw, throw Jesus off a cliff and kill him. But it says that Jesus just walked through the crowd and just walked away. Why didn't he let him kill him then? Well, it wasn't the time. There is a season and a time. And, and once we get in line with that, which only comes by seeking God and knowing him, are we at peace? When we're out of sync with his time, we are out of sync with peace. He is our source of peace. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. There's a big gulf and difference between religion 
and knowing God. The key to it all, though, that I just want to home in on is verse 4 of this prayer in John 17. He said, I have brought you glory on earth. Wouldn't we all like to say that? Wouldn't you like it at the end of your days, you're lying on your deathbed and and you could look up and, and pray to God and said, I have brought you glory on earth. I'm sure that's what many of us want. But how did he say he did it? He says, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And that is the key. Many start, but not everybody finishes. Some people hear God, but they do not obey. You know, I think of Jackie Pollinger. You, you know Jackie Pollinger? She, she felt like I needed to be a missionary. God's called me to be a missionary, but I don't know where. And she went and talked. She applied to missionary services, and they all turned her down because she didn't have a college education or anything. She had all the zeal. And then... After she was turned down, she was talking to this pastor, and the pastor told her, well, you know, Jackie, you are so passionate about this. What I would do is take all the money you have and buy yourself a boat ticket that will take you as far as your money will go, and wherever that ship lands, you get off and you just be a missionary there. I just laugh because I can't imagine any pastor telling anybody to do that. But you know what's so wonderful? is that Jackie just did it. She went and bought one a ticket and she ended up in China and she ended up doing a work there and she was freeing all the triads and all the the gangs and, and drug dealers in, in China. And it was such a ministry and it's still going on today and she has all kinds of workers there. And boy, she is glorifying God because She's completing in her life everything he's called her to do. I think of George Mueller. He was a pastor and he once prayed. He said, God, how can I personally glorify you on this earth? How can I do it? And God spoke to him and he told George Mueller, he said, said, first thing I want you to do is take your next paycheck from the church and give it back to them. And then when you do, I, I want you to tell them, I don't want to be paid anymore. I'll be okay. And then, and then God told him, what I want you to do, George, is you just pray to me for all your needs, whatever they are, and I will meet your needs. But don't tell anybody, and it will just be between me and you for the rest of your life. And through that, you will glorify me. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Well, he did it. He did it. And uh, he ended up with, with five big orphanages, he ended up printing millions of Bibles and sending them around the world. He started a missionary society. He had five large orphanages praying and, and, and thousands of kids coming through the orphanages. One day he didn't have any food. And, and God, God told him, what would you do if you had had food for breakfast, George? And, and George says, well, I'd set the table, set the kids around and we'd eat. See, so God told him, go ahead and do that. So that's what George did. And then they sat down to eat. George said the prayer, but there was no food there. And he was wondering what's going to happen. But then he had a knock on the door. And on the door, it was the baker. And the baker said, George, I just felt like God told me I should make all this bread for you. And I brought it to you here this morning. He, got, he said, God woke me up at two o'clock the night before. And, and then about 10 minutes later, the milkman, this is in 1912, so it was on a wagon, and the wagon wheel broke. So the milkman knocked on the door, asked if he could have some help moving the milk off, off the truck so he could fix the wheel, and he gave the milk to them for breakfast. And what George found throughout his life, that God answered all his prayers like this. And at the end, he glorified God because there are many books written about him. Faith mission goes by, by this model a life that glorified God. You know, when he retired, he decided, I'm always praying about missionaries, I'm going to go be one. And he went, I can't remember which country he went to, but it, said, it says he preached every day as an old man. You know, at the end of our lives, at the end of their lives, 
they would say, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. You know, I just turned 70 and I pray this all the time. I've been praying it all the time for the last 10 years. And I, I say, Lord, I don't even know all that you called me to do, but please help me that at the end of my life, I could say I glorified you by completing all the work you called me to do, everything that you had in mind for me to do. And you know, for the last six years, I ended up in this house and we opened it up as a prayer retreat home. I don't have time to tell you the story, but it's all been so miraculous. I have written a book in this last six years that God put in my heart and it's being published. It'll be out on, on June 12th. You can get it on Amazon if you want. It's called The Kingdom of God, The Director's Cut. I think it will help anybody who wants, who, who will read it. God has been leading and putting new things in my heart that I have been doing. I believe he's answering that prayer. Richard, I'm going to help you to fulfill all I called you to do in this life, and it will glorify me. And I pray, inspire me, Jesus, and I will follow. Put it in my heart, Lord, and I will do it, and I will do it. You know, no one ever regretted being a Christian on their deathbed. But some Christians have regretted ignoring the call of God on their lives. The work God called them to do, the mission they refused to take up, the challenge and the sacrifice they said no to because they liked the status quo and they just lived a life of mediocrity. That kind of life does not bring peace. I pray at the end, we will all pray like Jesus. I have brought you glory on earth, dear Lord, because I love you. By finishing the work you gave me to do, I put my trust in you and I have followed you and I have obeyed you, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, Almighty God, how great Thou art. <laughs> how great you, you are. And we thank You for the adventure You have set us on. And there's nothing greater than stepping out of the boat and walking on the water. There's nothing greater that, than taking the jump and the leap and following Your voice and seeing where You take us. There's nothing grander, Lord. It, it is just so much fun. And I think you want us to have fun in the journey. You want to surprise us with signs and wonders and all kinds of things. And we just say, here we are, Lord. Do your work. Do your work. We surrender, Lord. May it be at the end of our lives that we would know I have glorified the living God because I have completed all he's called me to do. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. in your grave.